Welcome back to question two of this series. And just like what we did in question number one, in this question, we're expected to indicate whether each molecule has dipole-dipole forces. Now, in case you did not watch the first part of this video, a molecule has these dipole-dipole forces if it is polar. And to determine whether a molecule is polar, you have to determine whether the molecule contains polar bonds and determine whether the polar bonds add together to form a net dipole moment. Let's begin with question A. We have Ci4 or carbon tetraiodide. Underneath, you'll see a illustration of what the molecule looks like. And it's assumed that when you do these types of problems, you can draw a Lewis structure of the molecule and be able to determine what type of shape it is, according to the Vesper theory. So with that said, carbon is a much less electronegative atom than is iodine. So we have the iodine pulling those electrons around carbon towards it. So there are polar forces. However, given that this shape is a tetrahedral, the forces are being pulled equally. And as a result, there won't be a net dipole. In other words, all of these forces will cancel out. So this molecule does not have a dipole-dipole force. Let's move on to part B. Here we have CH3Cl. We have a central atom being carbon, and these are hydrogens. Of course, hydrogen is less electronegative than the carbon. So the carbon will pull the electrons towards it, although the difference in electronegativity is so small that it's nearly nonpolar. On the other hand, we have chlorine, which is much more electronegative than carbon, and it will pull the electrons towards it. Now, since we have a tetrahedral here, given that these atoms, unlike in part A, are different, there will be a net dipole moment towards the chlorine atom. So this molecule does exhibit dipole-dipole forces. Finally, we have HCl, or hydrochloric acid. This is a very simple molecule consisting of chlorine and hydrogen. Of course, chlorine is much more electronegative than hydrogen, so it will be pulling the electrons towards it. And so we can safely assume that there's an unequal push towards one atom over the other, so this has a dipole-dipole moment. And there you have it, three more examples on how to determine dipole-dipole forces.